Um, my name is Verena Roberts. I live in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and I work as an instructional designer with Thompson Rivers University, and I teach with the uh, University of Calgary Workland School of Education. Um, my fellowship um, was about uh, collaborating with a former student of mine, um, and together we created podcast, a podcast series about um, her experiences um, having an instructor who used open educational practices um, and also about how to use podcasting as an open educational resource in courses. What worked really well was um, working in collaboration with a student and encouraging them in a mentorship position to really expand on their ideas. Um, it also worked really well to have the opportunity to collect data um, that expanded upon some of the work that I had already been doing um, with uh, some research on um, open learning design um, in courses and then having the student um, clarify or expand an idea on her perceptions. Um, what didn't work well was our initial idea was that we were going to take the data from the podcast and that was what the research was going to be about. So how do we really look at open data um, used in a different way? Um, and I haven't really got to that yet. So I would say the challenge was um, getting to the actual idea of what we wanted to do. Um, but the good thing is I can still do it and I'm going to do it. And the other challenge was at some points um, it was more focused on my student rather than on me. And so trying to figure out how that relationship or balance worked. My biggest takeaway is the amount of data now that has been collected and the potential for future research that I didn't really anticipate or expect. Um, so that's really exciting that there's more and more opportunity to do things. And also the expanded nature of um, my students' choice of um, idea of the open educational practices. So her perceptions and that data that I was able to collect really expanded upon ideas that I'd already done. So I'm able to connect two studies. <laughs> so the challenges was the challenge was really when the study became more about the student and not about me, but I know there's other questions that ask this, but it was that was the moment that I was able to connect with GoGN and I got back on track and figured out how to um, make it more about me. But again, that's not really a bad thing because then it was about two people instead of just one person. Um, GoGN supported me in multiple ways. Um, we had these check-ins and the check-ins gave me an opportunity to talk about my research out loud so that I could better understand what was happening. I could ask I, for ideas about uh, literature. Um, at moments I talked to them about um, uh, technical things when we were doing some of the, the research about podcasting on, on types of podcasting and what we should do. Um, and also the whole community supported us because we wouldn't really be able to do it because we turned to them for our data collection and we had a, a whole bunch of people that we were able to just ask questions of um, at the beginning of the of the research and um, using online surveys and, and so many people offered their advice. Um, and then Goji and specifically like the team, the people who are paid for, did more of the specific um, focusing, as I say, literature review, answering questions and guiding me through the uh, experience. I actually used all of the open educational resources in my current job um, and we used it as a pilot to figure out how do we um, 
collect um, different types of, of digital artifacts. So we had the blogs, we had the podcasts, we had different types of, uh, of, as I say, digital files, and then we collected them and we put them into this new um, library project that we're working on to create repository at our university. So that really benefited me in my job because I was able to um, discuss that. Um, and in other ways, it benefited me because of this potential research that I still can do and, and want to do and it, it because it connects back to what I was already doing. I think I would tell them, like any research, you go in with an idea, but you might not necessarily get the answer to what you think you're looking for. And that's okay. And the fellowship is an opportunity to explore things that you um, that you want to do. So it's it's more like your dissertation because it's not restricted by outside forces that tell you what you have to do, or maybe or grants that are telling you this is what your research question is. You you get to choose which direction you want to go in. Um, so it's a really good opportunity to do something that you're passionate about. Christie's um, fellowship was an opportunity to connect people all over the world and makes me even teary just thinking about it in the middle of the pandemic. <laughs> and uh, she connected with us when we like when everybody was really lonely and, and confused. Um, and the, the irony was it was creating a story, a picture book, online about what open could really be um the the some of the challenges in <laughs> that project where we were literally all over the world so time zones were a big problem um but uh she dealt with it by splitting us up into groups and getting us to focus on different things so that we could all connect and interact in different ways and we always felt that we were part of one big group even if we were separated and giving feedback in different ways um she also encouraged us all to write our own blog posts um and she used the data in really interesting ways and, and made me think about how i could research and use data in different ways um specifically she had used an online survey and we tried to figure out um what animals we should use for the picture book and um, what adjectives we should use to describe the animals um, and it was a great way of talking about the different perspectives of open and different angles and lenses in which we consider open, open education around the world um, metaphorically uh, without a lot of tension so because we could use animals to say, well, this is how, uh, you know, open is perceived in my country, or this is how open is perceived in my country. Um, and, and you're not really taking it personally. Um, she, she has a, a, an incredible way of, of leading us all to bring the best out of all of us. Um, and it was the main reason why I applied to do my own fellowship because she she made it look so easy. Although it, in retrospect, it's a little harder than I thought, which is okay. <laughs> For me, it is in, incredibly important. I, I started with some other peers and I, I'm still involved with them almost daily, connecting with them um, and encouraging them to finish their own PhD. So I think that's, that is the number one most important thing that you you start with your community and then you, you never lose it you still start giving back um i know the other day i received award for teaching and um I, i'm not quite sure who picked it up in in uh in twitter but sometimes you need that dopamine hit and you need your own peers to give you a pat on the back and so that's what GoGN did for me then because they were able to motivate me and encourage me um, when others didn't really know necessarily the value of, of the teaching award that I'd received. 
um, because it was based on open educational practices. So I appreciated it. Um, being involved, so being involved means giving back. It also means being part of the community. Um, it also helps really understand um, how open benefits everyone and can benefit that one person who will change the world one day. So the butterfly effect, it continues to help um, reach people around the world and it continues to help me spread and, and encourage others to consider open education within my own job and within my own university and research contexts. So it, it ensures that I never feel alone and that I will never feel alone again. Um, my advice would be to really get involved as much as you can. Uh, for me, that that included um, connecting with others, especially others who are doing similar research. Um, I know that some other Go newer Gojia members have connected with me, and you know we've spent some time going over their research, thinking about what they're doing. Um, and it never feel like members don't want to help because we really do understand what you're going through. And we often can send you on different journeys or or to people who can who can help. Um, we're also really that 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 person who, oh, as I say, understands what you're going through um, and can guide you to the other side. I guess that's the the big thing. Um, the the other, I, I think the hardest thing within a PhD is thinking that you're alone and you're the only one doing this. Um, and so Gojian gives you the opportunity to meet with people who are going through the same thing, but can also um, give you insights into how to get to the end. I think the hardest thing for me with the fellowship, probably like many is in a, in a dissertation. I completed my dissertation in a timely fashion. <laughs> we'll say very, very, I, I did get it done, but it is harder for me to get this fellowship completed. And I don't think that I will get it completed in the the time that I, I, I got a chunk of it completed in the time required that I needed to get done but it has extended and I just I think it's important that I I it, I, I mentioned that I will I know that I'll get the support and I will get it done and it will lead to future adventures um, and that's important when you think about doing the fellowship or considering the fellowship that it doesn't have to be a rush job and it doesn't have to be within a specific amount of time like three months or something it can be something that expands longer.